know their uncles, cousins, grandparents. And we told them now it's to use them. How are you guys? I'm ready for you. My name is uh, Bishop David Nyeri Thagana, and I am born in uh, Karatina, Nyeri County. Uh, I grew up and uh, I was born in a family that uh, was quite uh, a humble family, poor. We lacked many things, including the very basic things. And uh, while growing up, uh, moving from walking to school from, from uh, Karatina Shero to Kiamwangi Primary School, uh, I grew with the same, same struggles that, uh, that the children in a poor background do, barefoot, uh, once in a while have food to carry, sometimes no food. And uh, those, those, those struggles uh, are the ones that I grew in. And just like many African families, my, my dad came to Nairobi at quite an early age. Uh, so we grew in the hands of grandfather, his father, and uh, in uh, that traditional African setup where, where the sons build in the same homestead and the grandfather was the main male figure that, that we had in, in, uh, as we grew up. And uh, as, we, as I grew up, I, I realized that uh, the, uh, the, the, it was so important that I become an independent boy who could actually uh, be helpful to the family because as a boy growing up, being third in the family, I was beginning to feel the weight of the responsibility to at least eradicate poverty and meet the basic needs. So when I was uh, in class two in Kiamwangi Primary School, I, a thought came to me. Today, I really don't know how thought, that thought came to me, but it was just the effort to become independent and to eradicate poverty in the home. So I thought, what if I grew a cabbage uh, and, uh, and sell it? I would probably have money to, to pay for the things that we need in the family, food, clothes. And that is the mind of a class two at that time. And, uh, and, and I do realize that that is the time that God started uh, helping me to, to see, to take responsibility and to become a man in the family. And uh, so I actually grew one cabbage. And uh, this cabbage is the type that we call the sugar that gro grows together and uh, I would come from school running to come and water my cabbage, put manure on it, and the cabbage grew. And I sold it in Karatina Market uh, in 1972 for 75 cents. And I felt little responsible. I bought meat for our family because that is the food we never actually used to have. I bought a dress, a nylon dress for my mother. And I felt a man, I felt responsible. And uh, so, so the business in me began to be birthed out of that and the welfare of other people uh, began to be ignited and, and what I could do to actually fight poverty and make things better in the family. So that background is what later on became my motivation to want to help people who are struggling uh, with issues, to people who are having no food. I, I grew knowing that there's something I can do to help other people. I grew having experienced the, the, the needs and, and knowing that I would want to do something to change the situation. And again, in, uh, in 1972, my family uh, was to move from uh, Karatina to Nyandarwa because again, as, as typical of many families, when, when, when people grew together in the same homestead, the mother, the mother-in-law, the families, if this son builds there, their family, this son builds there. Conflicts began to arise. And, uh, and my dad being a person who is working in Nairobi and only comes after a month or two when money is available uh, and not really working, is just hawking and 
be learning how to drive and things like that. So that conflict between the grandparents and, and my mother, the in-law situation, brought a huge conflict that uh, my dad thought the best thing I can do, I cannot move my own parents. They are in their home. I can only move my family. So he actually moved us from Karatina to Nyahururu, a place called Raichiri in Daragua, in Darwa County, uh, in 1972, when I had just sold my cabbage. So I had enough 75 cents to buy people meat in a place called Gobet and buy my mother a dress uh, on, the, on the way. And that again, that part of the conflict that we had to move from what we call our ancestral uh, land to go and live in a new place in Nyandarwa County, that ignited in me the need for conflict resolution. I really wanted to see people live in peace with each other. I wanted to see families living in peace with each other. So, so when we went there and grew in Nyandarwa, uh, eventually became a Nyandarwa boy in terms of primary school, in terms of high school, just went to the same Nyandaro County, the Chao, Chao boys. And uh, eventually, after becoming, going to college, I came back to teach in the same district, Karema Girls High School, the national school there in Kinango. So I, I, Nyandaro became my new county in terms of primary school, high school, and working my first job I ever did it in this Karema Girls High School. But when I went to Karema Girls, I realized again, that was in 1988, uh, first of April is when the Teacher Service Commission uh, asked, asked me to send me there to teach. I realized that there was no Christian union. There was no Christian. I was used to a Christian environment in college and, uh, and I had grown, I had grown to love uh, serving people. And, uh, and so I thought I need to start the Christian, the Christian union here. And I had grown so much. So in that, and as I grew to become a Christian, that also began to change my perspective and my, my, my way of doing things. So now I had two things that were motivating me to do what I do today. Uh, one was my background, uh, wanting to eradicate poverty and to deal with the, with the, with the challenges in the home. That uh, really wanted, helped me to be who I am today, uh, the conflict in the family, in the, with the in-laws. I wanted to have peace and, and, and ha help other people have peace. And now going to Karema Girls High School as a teacher, and I cannot get the same Christian environment that I had in the college where people had a warm fellowship, people enjoying being in church. Uh, that again inspired me to want to start a ministry. Um, so basically, the motivation for what I do today is shaped by my background. Uh, so today I am too much into helping the orphans and the vulnerable people uh, eradicating poverty so that uh, they don't have to go through what I went through. And so today I am so much involved in empowering the windows who have lost husbands. Uh, I give them cows and goats, income generating things. Uh, because I, I just need them to be financially empowered so that they don't have to struggle bringing up their children the way we struggled. Uh, today, I am an ambassador and a champion of peace and conflict resolution. I am actually the winner of the Dyer Award for Peace and, and uh, Cohesion. Uh, this did not just come, but it came as a result of that background of just the small conflict that I saw in the family. And as I grew up, I began to see the bigger conflict of the tribes in the country. And I kept asking myself, can't, can't we just live together as one nation without caring which tribe somebody belonged to? Can't we, and I grew up to see the, 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 the conflict in, uh, in many other families where, which even leads to death and people killing each other. I grew to ask myself, can't we just uh, resolve conflicts in the families in, in peaceful ways? Can we, can't we resolve uh, the, the tribal conflicts? Then as I continued growing up, I began to see the bigger national conflict in politics. And I began to see the political parties, every, after every time we are having elections, people have to be displaced internally or killed. And I, and I began asking myself, is there, isn't there a way that we can build peace 
and uh, a sustainable peace in the country. So I got so much involved in peace and conflict resolution light from the family setup all the way to the, to the politics, the national levels. Then uh, I got an opportunity to go and, and serve in Luanda and learn of major conflicts of the genocide. And again, again, we started peace building ministries there. Then I was invited to in Congo and again learned of major, major conflicts uh, based on, on resources and tribes. And then we got involved with tribal conflicts there. Then again, we got to Burundi and again, the same, same conflict. So currently we have very vibrant ministries of uh, building peace and conflict resolutions in, uh, in, in this country that has enabled me to be uh, recognized as the Daya Award winner with similar ministries in Luanda, Burundi, Congo. And, and we want to see people living in peace with each other. But uh, they are all inspired by my background. And secondly, they are inspired by my Christian faith. When I became a Christian and I continued growing, all I started hearing is the model of love your neighbor, love God, love, 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 love. And I wanted to see practically what that means to love God and love neighbors. That again uh, became my greatest motivation. Uh, plus I also learned about uh, this model figure that I wanted to emulate, that is Jesus Christ. Uh, the, my Christian faith uh, influenced me to want to, 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 to keep seeing Jesus as a person who wherever he goes, he does good, he finds hungry people, he feeds them, he finds sick, he wants to, he heals them. He, he's doing good to everyone. And, uh, and that has shaped my philosophy of wanting to support the people who are less fortunate. So in 1991, uh, being a teacher at Karima Girls High School, in response to the needs around, I needed a framework, to legal framework to enable me to respond to all those needs that I see. And therefore I created Glory Outreach Assembly, uh, GOA, in April 1991, who are still teaching in, in, in Karima Girls which this, this uh, GOA now has grown into specific areas uh, of responding to the needs of the people in the community. The first one being the church, what we call the church growth or discipleship. Uh, we clearly understood that it is the mandate of every Christian from Matthew 28, 19, to go and take the gospel message to the people. Uh, so we took that very seriously that Christian mandate of Great Commission, taking the message to, to everyone, uh, teaching, preaching, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we, we feared to start with and wondered, how do we go to the nations? And we, by that time in 1991, I didn't even have a passport. I had never even been to any, 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 any country at all. So when, when God was calling me to start uh, Glory Outreach Assembly to go to the nations, uh, I was anxious, I wasn't sure uh, how what to do. I was still a teacher at Karima. I had never been anywhere and uh, I'd never been such a major leader anywhere. But um, then the Lord uh, spoke to me in verse 20 of Matthew 28 and said, I will be with you till the close of the age. That promise in that great commission of Matthew 28 verse 20, that I will be with you uh, till the close of the age is what encouraged me to move on. Even though I felt uh, unprepared, I felt that I was not qualified to do that. And uh, I, I, I decided I was going to take God at his word and hold on to that promise that God is going to be with me. And then as I continued reading the Bible and understanding people that God has called before uh, in the past in the Bible, I learned of Moses. He was saying he doesn't know how to speak. And God just told him, do not be afraid. And God had a solution of, of having uh, Joshua right there and Aaron and others. I learned of other people like Jeremiah, whom God called, and they said, I am only a child, I'm young. And God told them, do not be afraid. I knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. I kept on reading of biblical characters who felt the way I felt when God was calling me to start a glory outreach assembly. I, I, I read of uh, people like Gideon, whom God called, he said, I am the least from the least tribe. And God told them, do not be afraid. And therefore, I, I learned that God does not call the qualified, but he qualifies those he calls. And I said yes to God uh, to start GOA, 
knowing that I'm not qualified and knowing that God will qualify me. And so we have done this for 32 years now. So after starting uh, Glory Outreach Assembly in 1991, I realized that uh, we needed to do things differently because we didn't want to just start another church or another ministry because there were many in this country and they were not really having huge impact. So we asked ourselves, why is it that we have so many churches in the country, but still we have people who have not heard the gospel much? So we decided we're going to adapt that the Samburu people, we go to the villages and go where other people have not gone. Today, we are grateful to God because we have over 18 churches there that are leashed by their own Samburu people. And we, we started equipping them and helping them to understand the need to go into the village and meet the needs of the people and being relevant to that culture. We were so encouraged in the month of May 2003 when we reached the Samburu people that we wanted to move to Rodua. And uh, in October 2004, we decided to go to Rodua and adapt the Trukana people. And when we reached Rodua, uh, it was very new to me. It was my first time in October. And I started asking the people in, this, in the Rodua town, uh, who is it in, among you here who, who, who talks about church and Christians who can help me understand the needs here? And everybody I asked referred me to a person they were calling Missionary John. And I was so interested in knowing who is this Missionary John. So somebody took me there into the office of Missionary John and I talked to Missionary John. He was in an office called the Share International in Rodua Town. And uh, it was interesting to find that I'm finding a, a Trukana person. Uh, I thought Missionary John is a white person. And I found a Trukana person there uh, called John. They call him Missionary because he was the only one whom they knew. And uh, Missionary John told me, if you are serious about reaching our people in Trukana, are you willing to go outside 38 kilometers from Rodua Town? I said, why? He said, because that is where everybody focuses on the town. Because it's comfortable, there is electricity, there is shop, everything. Are you willing? I said, yes, I'm willing. If you're going to take me, because I don't speak Trukana, you go and translate the culture to me. And he said, yes, if you can feed our people, fill our truck here with food, fill with petrol and everything, I will go with you. So we filled the truck. And missionary John drove me. 85 kilometers away from Rodua town. And uh, there's a village called Akatuman village near Early Springs. Here we found about 3,000 people who came together when they saw the car because I think they are used to food. So when they saw the car, they came and they are seated, they are carrying sacks, they laid it. So if you really don't have food and you are there, it will be very embarrassing. So we sat, we talked to them, we preached the gospel. And I asked them, uh, how best can we serve you? The leader, an elderly man stood up and he said, if you can build for us a school here so that our children can learn and speak English like those ones of yours down in Kenya, because they don't even think they belong to Kenya, we would be very happy. So he said, okay, we'll do that. Number two, he said, if you can help us trail a borehole and get water here, you would save the children and our women a whole day journey to the Trukana, where they go and they spend a whole day back and forth, and they only come with 20 liters of water on their heads. Uh, you, and that time would be translated into uh, family time and uh, doing other things, and children can go to school. He said, that's fine, uh, so water. Thirdly, he said, if you could send people to us to live with among us and be sharing this message you are sharing with us, not just come and go, we would be very happy. So we knew they were ask, actually asking for church in the community. So those are the three needs that the man, the man raised. In October 2004, somebody is asking for church, he's asking for water, he's asking for school in a Katuman village. And we took that very seriously because these are actually people who are, this was the most difficult meeting for me to, to speak to because they were all naked and uh, and I was not used to seeing such many naked people of all ages. Uh, so we even had carried some clothes we gave them. Today, as we speak, that village has a primary school that we built, has sat for exams many, many, many years. In the first class, one of the boys is now a dentist because he said that he, he wanted to help 
his community have other ways of, of taking care of their teeth. And uh, when the teeth need to be pulled, that they'll be pulled in a way that is not as painful as the way they pull them up. So Kevin is, is our success story in that area and many others. Uh, then we got so encouraged, we went to another village uh, and, and started uh, another school. Uh, so, so that's, and then the, the parents started saying, no, we can't have our children educated and speaking English and we, we don't know English. Can you also allow us to come to school? So we started adult literacy in the, in the same community where the parents come in the evening and in the afternoon and they do adult literacy. One of the pastors called Mark, one of, is, uh, is, uh, he was so excited to read the Bible that he said he wants to go and start a church and also start another school in his own church so that other adult people can, can learn. So it has been an exciting journey, uh, reaching the Trukana people through education, through churches, through boreholes, responding to their needs. And then we got so encouraged. So we went on doing the same in Marsabet, went doing the same in, in Garrison. We have a missionary there from Nairobi, uh, Peter and Lydia, who has been there for 13 years interacting with the community in Garrison and North Coast, teaching them farming uh, schools and, and, and all those other needs. So that is what we call uh, a discipleship department for, for GOA ministry. Uh, and uh, as we continue doing this ministry, we realize that Kenya is a young population. 72% of the people are below 35 years. So we, we, and we realized that many of those youthful people are not interested in church. And we began to ask ourselves, what is it we can do that we can creatively respond to the Great Commission in the lives of these people? So we started Sports Evangelism. So my name is Paul Maina Mwangi. I am a family man, a father of one vibrant boy called Ray, and married to Mary Vivian. I am a sportsman uh, with a background in sports. I uh, played basketball, table tennis and other sports. And I uh, was privileged to lead the Central Kenya table tennis team in the year 2008 to be the Kenyan champions uh, in all the high school in Kenya. So I decided to pursue a degree in sports due to my passion. And so I hold a degree in uh, exercise and sports science from Kenyatta University. I'm also born again. And so my passion is uh, majorly to the young people, to the youth. I just love working with the young people, mentoring them, and just seeing them realize their God-given purpose and potential. So in the year 2014, I joined GOA. I just wanted to volunteer and give my degree back to God. And uh, I thank God that I made that decision. I found a loving family, people that welcomed me, a place where everybody is somebody, and a place where I could use my gift uh, to glorify God and to impact the young people that I'm so passionate about. And I thank GOA so much and I just thank God because a lot has been achieved from 2014. We have transversed this nation uh, right from the north to the south, to the east and to the west. And uh, our, our ours is to just creatively respond to the Great Commission to reach the young people, to mentor them, to disciple them so that they can live godly lives. We have uh, seen the introduction of uh, two new sports in Kenya uh, through GOA, that is uh, rollball and floorball. And God has given us a spirit of excellence. Our teams are doing so well and uh, they are emulated by all other people. So the rollball team is currently the world champions. And uh, you know, we make our team, our GOA team, makes about 50% of the national team. Uh, we've also been uh, privileged to introduce a sport called floorball in Kenya. 
And uh, this sport has seen us go to institutions that we could not go to. And we have over 110 teams uh, currently in uh, slum areas, in churches, in schools. We still have a challenge, especially in finances. We are now looking forward at taking the team to Ivory Coast in uh, September. But we have no funds, we have no hopes for funding from the government. Sponsoring one player to the African Cup will cost about 2,000 US dollars. We also have football teams, we also have uh, volleyball teams, and we also ha are now engaged in handball teams. So thank you, and with more of your support, we could do more. We have done what we have done and accomplished because of your support. And uh, our next phase now is to mentor more leaders uh, with the main focus on our children homes. We want to get closer to the children homes and we are glad that this is paying off. Uh, we have one Kevin Kanake that is going to the national games in football and many more others. So our focus in the next phase is to be a dependable uh, a movement that is sustainable, a sustainable movement uh, that will give back to the ministry. We are looking at selling floorball equipment for sustainability. We already have kickstarted that project and it is going on well. Uh, we are also looking uh, in the next phase to have our own grounds where our kids and our youth can come and play. So thank you so much for your support. We truly appreciate. God bless you. And sports became very attractive. It is the most uh, engaging, uh, creative way of responding to the youth in this country. We have been able to introduce a sport in this country called Lolbo. And uh, as we speak, Kenya is the champion in the world for Lolbo, for both men and women. Last year, uh, this year they brought the trophy from India uh, then we were very happy with the success of Lolbo, and then we, we ended up introducing another new sport called Flobo. Flobo, uh, we, we, it's, it's also very much uh, popular, and we have, Kenya has been the champion for this in Africa for Flobo until last week in Cote d'Ivoire when Burkina Faso took the first position. Right now, Kenya men are number two and women are number three. So, and we have the normal sports of soccer and the rest of the sports, the athletics. And through this, we are able to engage the young people. We are able to befriend them and show them the importance of, uh, of being in church. So, so these are some of the things that we are doing under discipleship. The second area that we respond to the Great Commission is we call it compassion, children's homes. Uh, we realized that uh, as we continued as we continued preaching and serving the people, that the challenge of orphans and vulnerable people and homeless and street children was, was a big obstacle to, 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 to the work that we were doing. So one day I went to Karatina Market to preach the gospel in the market. And I preached the gospel about John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. And people were excited and they were excited. So I made an, a call and said, would you like to give your life to Christ? And when I made a call, many people came and I prayed for them. Then I told them, you go and look for churches around here and become disciples and be taught. People went, but one boy refused to go. His name was Bonfas. He, was, he, came, he stood there with his glue and he said, I, I, I don't know where to go. I, I want to go with you. He was still having his glue. And I tried to listen with him, but finally I was not able to convince him to, 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 to remain. So I went with him and Bonfess became the first boy that uh, we took in our home. And my wife Joyce in the evening saw me come back with a boy and uh, we had not really talked about it. And that became, that boy actually changed my life, changed our life. And from that one single boy, we now have taken care of 790 orphans uh, within that period. Some of those orphans that we have taken care of and vulnerable children have gone through the home, the primary school, the university, 
and they have come back. My name is Josephat Mukubo, a young man from Miharati, Nyandarwa County. I joined to my children's home uh, at the tender age. I back in 2015. I spent in that home more than 10 years. I've been educated by the home from primary school all the way to the university. And uh, with that success, I'm now giving back to the home and leading, managing the schools. My name is Solomon Muraburi Wanjiro. I was raised and brought up in my children's home. Her name is Monica. She is my wife. We have been together now for three years. Uh, I joined to my in the year 2007. This is after becoming a total orphan. I used to live in Subukia. And uh, I joined to my children's home when I was 10 years old and in class four. From class four to class eight, I schooled there in Joy Education Center. I then joined Joy High School from form one to form four. Then I went to Mo University where I studied education. From there, I have taught in different schools. And then later, I joined to my, uh, I joined Rema Children's Home where I have been as a manager for the last one year. So most of us joined to Maini when we were very young and we thank God for the transition from being young to growing up. It takes God and through the sponsors and uh, well-wishers who come and help. We have, we, have, we have many people who have uh, gone through the program and they have come back and we are very, very exciting. So, so this compassion department of GOA currently is having eight children's homes and uh, 400 orphans. We take care of their food, clothes, medical. Uh, we take care of their education until the point where they exit the home, uh, either at the age of 18 or by the time they are, they are finished high school. And then we transition them to another department that we call leadership development so that we can begin to develop them. We discover the gifting they have. We develop those gifts and we deploy them to the various departments of GOA or even they, they, in the nation, they fit uh, competitively in, in, different, uh, in different places. So, so, so when they exit the home and they go to the university, they belong to a department called post-secondary, which is under leadership, where they are, begin, they are helped to see that, oh, you are not the same baby that was in the home. They are helped to move to, to deal with the transition, which is very difficult, transitioning from a home into a university where you are living on your own from the rural to the urban. And we bring them together in many mentorship sessions where we mentor them, uh, we help them understand the challenges and what to expect in the new life. And this has been very, very, very helpful. Uh, so, so, so we have that leadership uh, de development with that compassion and that mentorship is very, very strong in us. And right now we are dealing with uh, a government uh, uh, proposal or law that asks us to integrate the children from the institutions to the families and the communities by 2032. So we are looking at, at, at uh, what in the first place made these children come to the home, because now we want to take them back to where they came from. Once again, also for your interest, this is a government uh, document called National Care Reform Strategy for Children in Kenya. 2022-2032. So this is why we are gathered here, because the government of Kenya would like us to change the way we care for children in this country. Uh, we have been caring for children through our charitable institutions, which we call orphanages or children's homes, and GOA has got eight of those children's homes, and they are all, the leaders are all here of all those, uh, and other forms of care that we have been having like foster care. So the government has told us from 2022 for 10 years, we need you to integrate those children who are in the homes, from the homes to the families, through foster care, through guardianship, through kinship, through community. And uh, by 2032, that we need to have integrated. So that is why we are gathered here to discuss this, this, this government policy of the National Care Reform uh, for Children in Kenya. And, uh, and then we see what, how our response to this document. Because as you can see, it has 10 years, 
and one year is already gone because now we are in 2023, so we are trying to move against time so that we see what we can do in the next, uh, in the next nine years. So we are looking at what are the need assessment so that we know how to address the causes that made these children go either to the street or come to the homes. So we have been forced to begin empowering the families. Some of them, we give them cows for income. Others, we help them start some small businesses. Others, we, 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 we do just knowledge empowering. And that is our major, major task at the moment, to empower the communities and families to be ready to receive the, the children or take care of their children through guardianship, through foster care, through kingship and all the other methods. So in a more sustainable way. And, uh, and that is, we are, working, we are working towards 2032. So uh, resulting from my bringing up, uh, we could not leave this building behind. And therefore we deal with a lot of peace building events. Uh, we, GOA has become a recognized IEBC uh, civic education provider in this country. We are accredited to provide civic education. We, in this past election, we provided a lot of education and went around. And we take pride in, uh, in the successful elections, uh, especially without having people to fight and kill each other that we have seen in the past. We did our part in, in uh, building peace and, and educating the people on how to vote, voter education, uh, and the need to vote. Uh, GOA is recognized as a, as an, as, as a, as a, as a observer of elections. So we provided election observers all over the country uh, in our mandate to build peace and these such other national development uh, uh, events. So, so basically that is what, uh, what GOA is. I have grown in my leadership to become a national, a national and in, an international uh, person in this country, uh, especially uh, I'm currently leading the, the General Secretary of the Federation of All Evangelical Churches in Kenya, uh, which allows me to, 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 to support and provide, uh, provide the support to the many other churches that are growing up and build unity among the churches. It also helps me to, to, to reach out to places where we may not have necessarily GOA churches. This, this in my responsibility as the General Secretary of the Federation, I've become the voice of, uh, voice of reason for the church. So I speak a lot on issues that affect our nation. Uh, wherever, wherever it may be, we are current and relevant to the issues that Kenyans are struggling with, be they issues of, uh, of, uh, of economy, cost of living, be they issues of elections, be they issues, whatever, wherever they are, we, we, we are right in the front, uh, speaking the voice of the church. And, uh, and because of my role in leadership, I also happen to be the director for International Leadership Institute for all the countries that speak English and Swahili. So this takes me to many other countries in, in Africa, uh, where I'm responsible that uh, in, in the area of, of building leadership, proper leadership, because we believe that the crisis that African continent goes through are mainly more of leadership than even economics. So we want to build proper leadership and we agree properly with John Maxwell that everything rises or falls with the leadership. So we are strong in the issues of governance. We are, issues, we are, we are strong on issues of uh, freedom. Uh, at the moment, uh, this past week, we have spent the seven days with the special envoy of Somaliland from Sweden who had come to want to, to, uh, to help us or us to help in sensitizing the Kenyan government and the Kenyan community in, uh, in, 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 in uh, recognizing Somaliland as a nation by itself. And during the seven day, we have been able to meet the, 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 the ambassador for, for Somalia uh, from Sweden here in Nairobi. We've been able to meet the ambassador for Somaliland in Nairobi and many other dignitaries who are, have a voice and, and the reason we, we do this is because we believe uh, in, the, in peace in Africa. And if we are going to have a peaceful continent, then we must be interested in knowing what is happening in the region, particularly in the Horn of Africa. So that's why we are interested in Somalia, Somalia, Djibouti, the, and the, for the sake of the region of peace. So that is how 
we have continued to grow and progress and we are looking forward to a good country and a good continent and we are ready to play our significant role uh, to, to, for that. The ministry that we do and what we do is uh, we, we is sustained by well-wishers, by partners, by friends, both locally and internationally. We have, uh, uh, for the children's home, we have a model of which we call child sponsorship, where, where we have packaged uh, the needs of a child into three needs of basic needs, education, uh, medical, and each of these needs costs, uh, costs like $39. Uh, so three, three 39s, which is about 117, caters the needs, all the needs of, of a child in terms of education, medical, clothes, and everything. And we also, we, we also try to talk to, to the people who have companies and businesses, and we ask them to consider making our institutions their corporate social responsibility, where they can, they can, they can adopt us as their corporate social responsibility uh, platform, where we actually continue getting support from them. We also talk to the public, uh, and some people have just watched us on, med on media like this and they have said, I would like to be giving or to educate a child. I would like to support a child through education. I would like to... Some have watched us and said, can we go and drill boreholes with you in the north? And we have said, welcome. And uh, we have many boreholes drilled, especially in Lodwa, through the hell, or even in our children's homes. And others have come with their expertise to help us improve on our agriculture and methods of agriculture. Some teachers have come to volunteer, to give, uh, to teach our children. And uh, so we receive all uh, kinds of support from Kenyans uh, through the organizations and individual families that come to support us. And we also receive uh, support from uh, people who have learned about what we do internationally. And they have asked us to become partners with them. And we have created uh, frameworks of receiving that support in Switzerland uh, one of the girls from Switzerland called Rebecca came to Kenya and stayed for one year. And then when she went back, she was so impressed, she created GOA Switzerland, which uh, sends about 300 volunteers uh, in this country and sends uh, support, uh, support from Switzerland. And then uh, United States also, we have created a framework, GOA US, USA, through which people channel their support to support us. So we, we, we are open and we have many opportunities for people to support us. For anyone who would like to reach out to us, a physical building is in uh, Kahawa, Gioe Kahawa Wendani. That's where our, our headquarters is, in Gioe Kahawa Wendani. And we also have uh, uh, many, many uh, visitors who come to the actual project in the homes in Yandarwa, in wherever they are, people can just visit and walk into the home anywhere in Kenya. Uh, and uh, we have a lot of uh, friends who reach uh, out to us through the social medias. We are all in all the social media platforms. Uh, there is GOA Kenya, GOA International uh, in all the, 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 the platforms. And, and some actually come to my, my personal individual platform at Bishop David Munyeri Thagana. I use Bishop David Munyeri Thagana in all the platforms, Facebook, YouTube, uh, Instagram, uh, Twitter, all of them I use Bishop David Munyere Thagana and some people reach out to me through that and say and then we engage further then I can be able to direct them to where their questions are so we are we are available in all those all those platforms. We we have both uh, the GOA website which is uh, www.goaweb.org GOA, uh, GOA web .org. And also I have a personal website at davidtagana.com. Uh, all those, davidtagana.com, goaweb.org, all those, all those are, we are available on those and we can easily be reached.